wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here this morning. Um, respectable, the head of Department of Physics, Universitas Negeri Malang, Dr. Hari Wisodo. Honorable, the all participants, and I would also like to you. recognize and welcome all the keynote speakers from uh, Korea, Professor uh, Bang Hun Lee from Songan University. from California, from USA. <laughs> and this, uh, the next speaker, we, we, we still remember him actually. <laughs> Dr. Haryanto and Siahan from Indonesia. <laughs> and our teacher, Dr. Muhammad Farhani Roshid from Universitas Gajah Mada, Indonesia. And Professor Hussein Al Atas is still in his uh, way to Malang. And thank you for being here. It's, uh, and thank you also for having traveled from distance, especially for Professor Lee and Professor Umar Muhyiddin. Even it takes more than 24 hours, it takes 30 hours to fly from USA to Malang. What a long journey. Give applause to Professor Umar Muhyiddin and Professor Lee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in order to have a runway meeting this morning, let us pray uh, according to your own, your, uh, own spiritual beliefs. Pray, begin. Thank you. So this week is quite special, especially for the Department of Physics, Universitas Negeri Malang. Why? Because today we have the very special public lecture series which is in conjunction with the Conference on Theoretical Physics and Nonlinear Phenomena, CTPNP, tomorrow. And followed by two-day workshop and collaboration teachings on Thursday and Friday. So this is very busy academic meeting for our faculty. And that's why actually this is uh, our, our schedule for having the middle examination. And because of that, we postpone the middle examination on next week. <laughs> so the students are very happy because they just need to listen to the lecture without having been examined by, by Professor Lee and Professor Oman, also <laughs> Professor Harianto. So the lecture series will be respectively delivered by Professor Lee, Professor uh, Dr. Harianto M. Siahan, and uh, Last but not least, in this morning, Dr. Muhammad Farhani Roshid also will give the presentation. Professor Umar will give the presentation after, in the afternoon uh, with Professor Hussein Al Atas. And each of them will have 15 minutes talk, followed by 10 to 15 minutes Q&A sessions. So prepare your questions. And ladies and gentlemen, now let's proceed to the first uh, talk that will be delivered by Professor Lee. He is a professor of physics from Sogang University, Korea. And currently, he is the president of the Korean Physical Society. And if you check in the Scopus database, you will eventually know that his citations, he has uh, around uh, 2,000 citations from 180 documents by author. So, uh, Professor Lee has uh, the expertise mainly about the theoretical physics and today Professor Lee we, is here to share with us his expert's opinion on the topic of from cosmos to particles status and, change, and challenges. So with that I ask you your very full attention. Now ladies and gentlemen please welcome Professor Lee. Okay. <laughs> Uh, nama saya uh, Bong Hun Lee. <laughs> uh, uh, saya dari Korea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So uh, let me just begin. Uh, are there any some uh, pointer that I can? Uh, I can do myself, I guess. Okay, that works. And the page control. Okay, it looks simple. <coughs> So uh, I, uh, before beginning my uh, sci uh, scientific contents, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce briefly uh, the about the Korea and the my university. Okay, so okay, we are. I, I guess now I am uh, here, and I'm from uh, this small country. So it's uh, Indonesia is much much bigger than Korea. Uh, so here, uh, so Seoul is the capital, population, population is only 50 million, uh, it's much less than, so you are five times bigger. <laughs> and the area also uh, is uh, essentially 100,000, so it's uh, almost, it's uncomparable to me. Okay, and also we are the own, uh, so near the China and the, uh, Japan, we are between, and also the only country that has been divided in the world at this moment, unfortunately. Okay, uh, this is my university picture. Uh, this may not be uh, very familiar to you. Uh, so so uh, 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 this is the symbol of the university, and uh, uh, as you can see, it's uh, uh, taken uh, during the winter. We have a uh, quite much snow. So when you have chance to come to Korea, especially during the winter, you may enjoy the snow. Okay, so my university uh, usually, uh, so the Han River divides uh, Seoul uh, into two pieces, north and the south. And uh, our location is, uh, uh, so we have uh, three universities, Seogang, Ihua Women's University, and Yonsei University, all within walking distance. So I did say we can call it as a university town. It's a really uh, many young students, very bright, uh, bright and uh, lively place. I, uh, I believe everybody will uh, really enjoy that place. So it's so a Sogang University. We have a 50 years story, uh, history and uh, based on, uh, actually established by Jesuit uh, Catholic. Uh, and the, uh, I don't want to go to detail, related to the uh, international relation uh, in uh, physics, uh, we have, uh, among other universities, some years ago, we have some uh, relation with the Sanata Dharma uh, for the chemistry education, but also we have relation with uh, Univer uh, Uni uh, University of Gazamada, so uh, having, uh, trying to have some uh, cooperation in uh, all the fields. I hope, I mean, the, we have also uh, good uh, cooperation with the uh, Universitas uh, Negeri Malang. Uh, okay. okay, so, uh, so we have the undergraduate is so, uh, much smaller than I just this morning. Uh, we, uh, we have some uh, uh, conversation with the uh, uh, dean and the faculty members. I found my university is uh, small in terms of size, but we have also graduate schools and also the uh, uh, things. And the, uh, the to tell the, a little bit about this, uh, how to come to university, uh, you don't have to know any Korean language requirement. As long as you can understand uh, English, then the, that's also okay. That's the minimum requirement. Uh, and the once one is uh, admitted, good thing is that we use at the university level. We cover eighty percent of tuition. Remaining will be supported by the faculty members. So that's the uh, so for those who are interested in. So uh, once again. Uh, here, uh, if this is the whole uh, the economic budget uh, uh, for uh, in Korea, then for the tuition by university remaining and also living cost by professor. That's the typical structure. 
Okay. Oh, we are very uh, highly ranked, and uh, I think I mean, Korea and uh, Indonesia have a very good relationship at the governmental level. Uh, I, uh, I hope that relation also at the university level. Okay. Now, uh, so, uh, this is the major part that uh, I'd like to share with you. So the uh, we are so uh, we consist of metal. Then uh, how is how should we understand metal? What is the point of view in physics? Well, uh, from the history, we try to understand uh, the all the complicated metals, trees, rocks, and everything from some simple components. So in the uh, early days, uh, the uh, Greek philosophers thought. Only four elements out of four elements they, uh, they thought they can describe all the changes in the world. So there was the earth, air, fire, and water. So it's a four. So these four elements would explain everything. But uh, later stage, as you see, the number of basic things are uh, increasing. Sulfur, salt, mercury seems to be really different elements. So then, uh, in, uh, in the uh, end of the uh, uh, 19th century, so-called chemical element reaches uh, close to uh, 100. So then, by that time, uh, so we are uh, physics. Uh, we are interested in physics. Then there's too many numbers. There must be more fundamental constituent. And it turns out that it was actually proton uh, that uh, forms the nucleus, and also electrons. So just uh, by counting the number of electrons surrounding the protons, uh, the actual nucleus turns out to be later. Uh, that's the, uh, that can explain all the hundreds of the uh, elements. So simple things to uh, explain uh, complicated things. But in the uh, 20th century, again, uh, the element things are increasing. By We have some uh, artificial accelerators and the collisions. Then the nucleus are also complicate things, so end up to be more and more than the, again, the same re repetition. So that cannot be the fundamental. There must be more fundamental constituents for the metal. And it uh, turns out that there was actually quarks and the uh, uh, leptons. The lepton uh, is uh, actually generalization of the electron. Then with that idea, less than 10 are the fundamental. That's much simpler. Now we were happy because with uh, less than 10, we can explain all the different uh, metals. Then the uh, problem is that at the, uh, 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 since 1960s, the number of quarks are increasing, the number of leptons are increasing. If the lepton is, so we have electron, muon, and the tau one, uh, the quarks, and also we have uh, up quark, down quark, strange quark, then charm quark, and uh, uh, bottom quark, top quark, so we have more and more uh, the uh, quarks. So there are two options. Well, that's what it is. So actually, it, it will stop, and uh, that's the uh, that's what it is. That's essentially what we call standard model. And another way is that well, if we go higher and higher energy, who knows? And another option is that we do need some new idea that is more fundamental. And one try of that is so-called string theory, super string theory, you may have heard. So by string, we have a string, vibrating string. So there are many um, uh, ways of uh, vibration, so-called normal modes. So each normal mode will represent different particles. So it's a very, becoming very simple. Single concept of uh, strings may explain all different particles, quarks and leptons which will be the, uh, the elements forming, uh, I mean, the basic constituent for the old elements. So that was really happy. Okay. So that was essentially my introduction. And uh, let's go. Uh, this, this is actually a repetition of the experiment. So let me just, by the way, uh, I, I do not have my uh, watch. So how can I see the time? Oh, okay, there's a clock. So I started from what time? So, okay, so, okay, so, okay, you, you, so you may just let me know the time, okay. 
Okay, so these are uh, the main uh, main thing here is that uh, the uh, lesson is that this is the element of table, and uh, there are so many, and it turns out to be the actually the well, basic things are electrons and the nucleus, and the. Uh, here, uh, I explained already that in the uh, uh, 20th century, there have been uh, the more and more fundamental particles. So this was a uh, chemistry element, but this is the particle physics uh, discovery. And uh, this idea led, uh, this uh, kind of more and more particles led to the idea of quarks and the uh, leptons. Uh, that's uh, what it was. And uh, uh, more and more particles discovered uh, 60s, 70s keep uh, discovering, and uh, those are actually the uh, uh, so can be summarized as a simple uh, pictures. So, what we believe at this moment in 21st century is that everything, whatever it is, uh, our body or uh, air or uh, whatever, so trees and the water, everything consists of either quarks or leptons. Uh, interest, uh, the major, uh, we do know electron, they live long enough and uh, may be very stable. And, but uh, there are may, uh, other elements also, neutrinos and the, also the muon and the tauon. And uh, these are the quarks. So we have, I mean, the, you, you have one, two, three lines, we call it as a family. And also two lines consist of two, uh, two rows and the three columns. That has a deep meaning. The question is whether we can add more lines or columns, and it seems that based on the experiment, it's not possible. So that seems to be complete as it is at this moment. So uh, then, uh, based on this, and also the, uh, the, uh, we have also, in addition to this, we have a photon light, and uh, uh, similarly, the Z boson, W boson, and the gluons, and the Higgs. So those seem to be the complete basic elements uh, at this moment. So we call it as a standard model. We may call it as a standard theory. It started as a model, but now uh, most people believe that uh, this is a theory. So we may call it as a standard theory. Okay. So the way we understand is that all the uh, every change, every phenomena can be understood at the fundamental level by uh, uh, between these we may call it, these are the constituent of matter. These are matter uh, uh, the, up to here. And then matter interaction is mediated. There must be some mediation. So these are the mediators. So the, the uh, most in, uh, the familiar thing is a photon electromagnetic interaction by charge. So, but uh, not only that, but uh, every other things like a uh, decay of the uh, radioactive uh, nucleus and everything can be on those very similar way. So the, uh, we have a meta constituent and the uh, mediator for the force. That's the uh, present understanding. Okay, this can be studied by uh, some uh, facilities. Uh, this is located in, in the uh, CERN Geneva. Uh, this dotted line uh, was drawn. This is the border line between France and the Switzerland. And uh, this is the Switzerland uh, Geneva Airport. And uh, you may see the uh, mountains here. That's the uh, uh, Jura Mountains. You may, be, uh, you may uh, heard about the Jurassic uh, the, uh, Park or some uh, movies, right? Uh, where we have also the uh, that's uh, from uh, the fossils from this mountain, and then there is a big, big uh, accelerator uh, underneath here, 27 kilometers. So to be more uh, okay, so, so this uh, the tunnel, 27 kilometer tunnel, uh, looks like this. So it's so 27 kilometers. It's not easy to walk around, right? You cannot finish in some hours, right? So you'd better to ride on some uh, bicycle or some uh, electric car, so it's a big enough. And so that you can, uh, if something wrong, then you have to repair, right? 
and uh, especially as a student. So then that's the way. So that's the uh, experiment. Uh, so the energy, so, so electron volt, uh, you start from electron volt. TeV means a tera is a 10 to the 12. So it's a, that's the highest energy that we can, uh, that is available at this moment. You know, all the standard model picture was confirmed by uh, this kind of experiment. So this is the picture for the uh, detector. And uh, this is a, a human being, some, uh, some experimental list. And uh, this is the size of the picture. The beams are going, through, one beam is coming this way, the other one coming this way, then they make a collision. Then through the output of the collision, you can see what happened. So actually, uh, so typically for this kind of experiment, couple of thousands of people are involved in such experiments. And uh, this is kind of uh, reconstruction of the event uh, by computer. Uh, this is the way the, uh, the previous results are um, done. Now, let me shift gear a little bit to the, uh, rather than we just try to understand everything by coming a small and a smaller unit. The what is the smallest and the fundamental level structure? And the another way of, pick, uh, way of thinking is that what is the largest one though, so that we can imagine. So that's the, actually the universe. So uh, this is the smaller and the smaller atomic scale and the subatomic scale. We can go to the astronomical, uh, the uh, bigger and the bigger scale. So actually, so two different uh, frontiers or two different way of looking our universe. Okay, so question is, are these connected at all or are they totally different uh, science, uh, et cetera? So, <clears throat> so uh, we may see this in terms of the uh, size or in terms of energy or for the universe in terms of, uh, 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 in, in terms of the time scale because universe was actually uh, very small uh, like a uh, tiny, uh, as small as it is, then keep increasing. That's the present picture. And the important thing is the uh, quantum mechanics. The what quantum mechanics tells you is that if you want to, uh, if you want to take a look a uh, small and a uh, smaller scale, you do need higher and higher uh, ve uh, velocity or momentum or higher energy. So uh, to study the smaller scale, you do need higher energy. So very strange in a sense, but uh, uh, that's what quantum physics tells you. Okay, so the, uh, the conclusion, let me just uh, give you the conclusion first, uh, is that the, oops. Uh, so uh, this is the smaller and the smaller scale, this is large and larger scale. But as you can see here, uh, they are somehow connected. So largest scale of physics, like a universe, can be explained and only can be explained by the smallest uh, structures. In other words, if we go to the earlier, earlier in the universe, uh, then the, there is a so-called Big Bang, and then the, our universe is expanding, so that uh, we see the present uh, structures but as we come back to original small and the smaller scales, everything is, uh, the temperature is going up, everything is, uh, uh, the atom is reionized, protons are dissolved into quarks and etc. So at that level, the way to understand the universe in the early stage, the only way is relying on the smallest scale physics, particle physics of standard mass. In that sense, the smallest scale theory and the large scale cosmologies are uh, uh, so really interconnected together. Okay, so about the cosmos, the beginning is uh, in, the, in the old days we say that uh, in the, uh, here uh, in the, uh, uh, by looking at the sky we may say that is universe static, not changing. It's a quite appealing idea. So if nothing changes, then that seems to be some eternal. Uh, and the, is it really, I mean, the universe will be eternal uh, or finite uh, lifetime? 
and uh, are there any infinite number of uh, stars? You, we may ask many things. Until, let's say, 60s or uh, 1960s or 70s, these kind of questions nobody can answer. You may say whatever you want to say. Nobody can uh, prove or disprove your claim. So it's like, I mean, uh, rather than science, it's also related a little bit to uh, religious or personal belief. But now, these questions are not that religion, but it's a really scientific question. We have very clear answer. It's a big, big change. So the, uh, uh, I'm afraid of uh, the uh, lack of time, but let's see. Oh, it's a very simple, uh, let me say some simple old thing, uh, so-called Olbers paradox. We may say that why night is dark? In the, uh, uh, during the daytime, we have one sun. Sun after sunset, still we have so many stars, but why is it dark? We are so much used to it, but if you think a little bit more, uh, if the stars, uh, there are infinitely many stars and they uh, uniformly distributed. If you go uh, twice further, then the, uh, the light intensity will be dropped by one of R square, as everybody knows. However, the surface area is increased by, again, the uh, R square. So twice further away than the four times more area. So there are four times more stars. So the, uh, each star uh, brightness is reduced, but the number of stars are, are compensating. So if this is infinitely many stars, so full of, so it's the same as the stars are very close like sun. So there is no reason why night is dark based on this argument. So something must be wrong. Night is dark, right? Definitely. So what is wrong with my arguments? So then we can see the, uh, some arguments. Uh, uh, so one of the things is the final size of the observed universe. Uh, for example, then this argument is break down, etc. So uh, that's the, uh, uh, so in other words, at least uh, the static infinite size of the universe with infinitely many stars, that's wrong. Why? Because night is dark. That is the proof that the universe cannot be infinitely large, infinitely many stars. That's totally wrong concept. Something must be uh, wrong. Okay. So the uh, way to understand uh, is uh, essentially here. Uh, how do you start the stars? Uh, when I was high school student, I learned some of uh, my teacher uh, told us some uh, history, uh, the philosophers, uh, some uh, philosophers' uh, idea. Uh, so I guess they are real, uh, real uh, realism or something. So there's a, a philosopher Kong uh, in 19th century. Uh, so if we cannot see something, if it is not practical, it is, uh, it's, uh, it's meaningless to talk about the things that we cannot actually reach, we cannot really understand. So based on uh, him, the uh, main message is that studying the stars is useless. Because how can you go to the stars? That's uh, too far away. Then how can you know that how, uh, 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 how the star is made of? So studying uh, star, the only thing you can say is that where it is, the location and the brightness, the such kind of astronomy, that may be all. You, we cannot uh, know anything further. We cannot study any further. However, just right after his such claim, uh, some years later, so-called uh, spectroscopy uh, was discovered by this uh, spectroscopy, and we can see uh, the stars, are, uh, the stars, the light is coming to us, and also there is also Doppler shift was discovered. So if something is moving, their frequency or their uh, wavelength is also shifting. That's the Doppler shift. 
So without going to the stars, you can see how fast the star is moving by seeing the uh, uh, frequency or uh, wavelength change of the light uh, of the light from the star. So it's very so it's uh, very dangerous uh, to really claim something uh, in uh, science. Okay. So uh, uh, as a result. Uh, the observation says if the stars are farther away and the further away, the star is uh, removing from us. That's the observation, first observed by Hubble. So uh, from this data, you can see that if the stars are further away and away, the uh, uh, red shift or the velocity is bigger and bigger, they are uh, receding further away. So uh, uh, that means if we just go uh, the time of reverse, uh, so go earlier and earlier stage, the expanding things uh, in the, uh, before it will be collapsing. So there must be some beginning. So this observation, uh, the Hubble's uh, uh, universe expansion says in the uh, uh, in the some finite time, universe size should be essentially zero size. Right? That's the conclusion. So, a uh, universe has age. It's not the infinite. That's just some beginning. But uh, how does it look like in the real beginning? That's still, we cannot say uh, based on uh, science because we do not know fundamental theory yet in the real beginning. But at least we can say up to some very uh, uh, beginning. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, picture for the stars, uh, and uh, essentially, thing is that as you may see that they are more or less uniformly distributed. So we believe that the uh, 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 universe is homogeneous, and also the isotropic. Any direction is the same. We are not talking about in this room. So here I, I am here, and the empty. Then suddenly, so uh, the bottom. So the density is uh, very irregular, but I'm not talking about that scale. I'm talking about the scale uh, much, much bigger than the distance between the galaxies. So here, the, uh, the distance unit is a parsec. Essentially, parsec is uh, three times uh, light is going for one year, very far away uh, parsec. But megaparsec is the di uh, distance between the two galaxies. So uh, I'm talking about the scale much bigger than that. You may say that this uh, glass is very smooth uh, because you are uh, scanning uh, smoothness in the some millimeter scale or something, which is much, much larger than the atomic scale. If you just take a look at the uh, atomic uh, scale, the density is very, very different. But only at the uh, millimeter or larger scale, we may feel that, OK, this surface is very smooth. This surface is very smooth. So scale is very important. So if you take a look at the universe in a very large scale, so that uh, uh, in a, some your scale, there are so many uh, galaxies uh, inside, then that's the scale I am talking about. In that scale, uh, so a uh, universe is very homogeneous. Okay. And in that scale, uh, there is no uh, direction dependence. So that's uh, the beginning. And the, uh, also the expanding uh, universe. Based on that, uh, this is the, uh, I guess, the first uh, serious equation in my presentation. But since uh, essentially we are all physics uh, students, I guess, right? So uh, how can I finish my talk without any equation? So here comes the equation. Oops. So this is so-called Einstein equation. But I'm not talking about the detail. The, the, the only message is that left-hand side is related to space-time, OK? So space-time structure, uh, all the information of the space-time, uh, space all kinds of space-time structures are encoded in G menu. Right-hand side includes all the information about the matter. So
So uh, the Einstein equation, what Einstein equation tells to us is that matter will determine space time. So in other words, space time and the matter is not independent. So matter is in influencing the space time, or matter determines the structure of the, uh, uh, the space time. So we do know all the uh, matters, uh, etc., then uh, we know the universe. So that's the beginning, and the others are all the details, which I don't want to go detail. Okay, so uh, there are many stories, but the, I'm afraid, uh, so how many? Hmm? 30 minutes, oh, three zero. Okay, so then I'll just a little bit uh, slow down, okay. So, based on such uh, uh, Einstein universe, the, what we have, uh, the picture is uh, so-called, is after long, so many peoples and the uh, observation and uh, study, uh, what we believe is that the Big Bang cosmology. Okay, so let me just uh, show a little bit, uh, okay. Okay, uh, Big Bang universe, Big Bang universe is that the, in the early stage, uh, our universe was very tiny, and then as time goes on, they evolved. That's the uh, uh, Big Bang universe picture based on the uh, observation, but uh, such concept is not easily accepted. We believe that uh, we were educated from the beginning that, okay, our universe is expanding, but uh, when uh, this idea was first proposed, uh, it was not easy to be accepted because many things. Uh, here uh, you may, uh, so uh, let me say that the, uh, how, how can the universe be, even universes um, have a beginning and uh, started at a time? It's a very strange. So uh, that's uh, like uh, some crea uh, creation like in the Bible. Well, it's not a scientific idea. Uh, many scientists were against that kind of Big Bang idea when it was first introduced. But later, it's also what, uh, that's what observation is and uh, other alternate, no other alternative. So that's the way we uh, uh, understand the uh, Big Bang cosmology. So the tiny universe, keep increasing, that's a, uh, some simple idea. But it has also a, a problem. Uh, if we take a look at the very far away from there, then uh, way from their universe, all universe, and the way from their all universe uh, looks like the same. Even though, if everything has some uh, beginning, uh, then there is uh, some time that uh, uh, the, uh, they have to interact physically. Okay, let me just say, uh, uh, it may come later, but let me say this way. In the universe, if we take a look at more and more so further away, that's the earlier and the earlier time. Because light will take longer and longer time. So. Uh, Taking a look at the very further away object, that means we are taking a look at the earlier universe. So further away means earlier universe. So the distance and the time are related when we talk about the astronomy and the cosmology. Okay? So if we take a very, very far away, very far away, then it's a very early universe. That's like very far away. That's also all universe. And then, since we have so-called time zero, beginning of the Big Bang, so some size universe, so some region and another time, uh, since the uh, time has not passed long enough, there is no way that the, uh, this side will influence that side, some interaction. So we say causally disconnected. There is no way that the physics in one side affect the other side. But the temperature in the whole universe, the high temperature, is the same. Which direction we take a look. So there, even though there is no reason why they have the same picture. So, so the, in other words, homogeneity and the isotropy 
if we have a finite universe in the present, cannot be explained uh, by Big Bang. Somehow it was given that way. So the idea is that well then people uh, the, uh, then, uh, talked about the inflation idea. The present universe is uh, very big, but it's a very tiny region, so that they interact together, but suddenly they inflated, like uh, inflation in economy, so inflated. So it's uh, becoming suddenly very big. So we th just we thought that the universe, that side and that side is not related, but actually uh, it's uh, just uh, uh, as a result of the inflation. Before the inflation, they were interacting together. So that's the way to explain the homogeneity and isotropy. So uh, this is the time evolution. So time is uh, uh, so we are so this is the present time. This is early and earlier time. Time equal to zero, Big Bang time, and uh, this is the size of the universe. Let's say. So uh, it's uh, rather than uh, just uh, so going uh, rather than this kind of thing without inflation, this is the universe. However, there is some inflation period, exponentially inflation period. Then uh, this way. So uh, our present universe is much, much bigger than the case without any uh, inflation. So inflation idea is needed. So you may see that well, the universe looks first very simple and beautiful, but you are talking about some more, uh, some uh, concept. But anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's the only way that we can understand this moment. Okay, so as I said, uh, all the pictures are the, based on this Einstein equation, space time and the matter. So by doing this, uh, the Big Bang, then the suddenly, uh, right after some Big Bang, there is a sudden increase, there's uh, inflation. Then all the complicated uh, process, but we do understand all this process, more or less. We understand very well, even though I may not go into detail. So that's the present picture for the uh, universe. And we can explain more detail, but uh, let's not be, uh, let me just say uh, just only one word uh, here. Uh, during the uh, universe, in the early universe, uh, the older metals were in terms of the quarks and the leptons, etc. Then the most important thing is that they are all charged. Electron is a charge, minus charge, and the quarks also has a charge. And then, once it is charged, they are interacting very heavily, or the photon, through photon, or we may say that photon takes a long time to move around. Or in other words, uh, here, uh, my laser point light seems to go very easily. So here, we, we see here very easily. But go straight, but just because uh, from here to the screen, uh, only air, air is, uh, air is not dense. And it's a neutral, most important is neutral. But if uh, the, uh, the, the, the region is filled up with a plasma, charged particles, my laser point cannot go through straight. It will uh, make a diffusion, and it's a scattering, complicated things and also takes very long time. So the, the uh, very important uh, event is that the uh, universe at some stage become neutral, charge neutral, by forming hydrogen atom. The simplest thing is hydrogen atom, right? Proton, positive charge, and electron, negative charge, combines into atom. So that event is very important. Before that is a plasma, so even light cannot go through. But once it becomes neutral, then photon can travel freely. So that's what happened. So that we call it a, a recombination. Then the, since a recombination, light is free. So let's say, uh, some, there is some recombination time. It's uh, uh, about uh, 30, uh, 38, uh, uh, 
어, 3,000, 어, 300,000, 어, 어, 380,000 years after Big Bang. Okay? Uh, then, since then, light is going uh, uh, straight and uh, no more interaction. In other words, when we see the, any light coming from very far away, the information we can see is up to this one. This year. We cannot go further before because at that time, light was very, very complicated. Uh, they had a very complicated history. So very, very hard. But once it leaves, uh, it, once it uh, just goes through the, uh, after the ion, uh, the recombination, uh, universe is uh, neutral. So light is coming uh, straight. So then it's uh, just free light coming. Then, what is happening is that, but the universe is keep expanding, so Doppler shift. So the frequency, uh, the wavelength is becoming longer and longer as it comes here. So in the beginning, light was uh, like this, but as it comes, like longer and longer wavelength. So we call this a red shift, right? So that in the early stage, it was really a high temperature, very uh, uh, the uh, light, uh, that one, but uh, the light at the time now is observed as microwave, very long wavelength, wavelength order of some meters. Okay, so that's we call uh, we call as a, a cosmic microwave. Yeah. So cosmic microwave is that in the very early universe, light is uh, there was a light. But uh, right after the combination, light is coming free. But the uh, long, so uh, longer and the longer wavelengths, so that at uh, this uh, stage, so in other words, uh, that's the same as cooling. So as we go, uh, all universe, uh, temperature was high. So as uh, it comes to us, due to the expansion of the universe, uh, the temperature is cooling down. So that uh, with all such information, we see so this is the uh, like really a microwave uh, background, and uh, from this we can see that the temperature at this moment is 2.7 Kelvin. But of course, in the early uh, universe, uh, the recombination time temperature is uh, uh, more than 10,000 uh, 10,000 Kelvin. It's a much higher temperature. So this observation was made in the 60s, and uh, uh, in the beginning, they saw, uh, uh, these two gentlemen who got a uh, later Nobel Prize for this discovery was not working on the microwave uh, background, but they were working on the telecommunication because it pays more than physics. But uh, they, so, so telecommunication means at the time US and the Europe. But they got somehow noise always in the, their experiments. So they, at some stage, they, uh, if you take a look, they thought that uh, in the, uh, this is the uh, uh, Bell Laboratory, and uh, uh, there, there is uh, some many uh, uh, balls, a dove, let's say. So maybe a dove uh, stays inside and uh, make some uh, remnants there. So they just get inside this uh, the structure and uh, got rid of clean that things. But after whatever they did, uh, the noise never uh, gone. Later, with the uh, uh, physicists working on that uh, the microwave background, they realized that that was coming from everywhere in the universe. The background noise, so-called the cosmic microwave background, which gave them the Nobel Prize. Okay. So that was at the 1960s. So at that time, the only thing they can tell is that the, only the temperature, average temperature. But the people were uh, interested in uh, more. So the thing is that if it was really, really 100% uh, homogeneous, then there cannot be any other inhomogeneity. Star, galaxy, that's all inhomogeneity. Okay, we understand this. On average, there's a homogeneous, but there must be some tiny inhomogeneity to make us. We are structured with a very high inhomogeneity. 
some lots of atoms forms me, and lots of, lots of atoms form stars, there must be some seed for that inhomogeneity. So that kind of things can be read from the cosmic microwave background. So people try to uh, uh, do the observation by the satellite. So in early stage, uh, early uh, end of uh, 80s and early 90s, uh, this uh, so-called Kobe experiment. At the time, uh, the color code of the uh, temperature they observed was this. Then later, uh, 2000, they also did the experiment. As you can see, it's much more final, right? And then uh, in the 2010, after 2000, uh, even uh, so, uh, some years ago, it was like that. Now that's our the present. Uh, is is uh, no longer uh, the homogeneous. There's uh, some tiny inhomogeneity, but inhomogeneity is not really big. But only uh, 10 to the minus five. It's, uh, this is exaggerated picture. So to do the color code, so it's a uh, uh, very tiny inhomogeneity. But of course, only the first one got the Nobel Prize and the these are not. Kobe okay. got also the Nobel Prize, but not the others. Okay. And the, uh, another thing is, universe is expanding. Uh, is it increased uh, the, uh, but the, you may say that uh, expanding velocity will be slow and the slow and the maybe stopping then collapsing, or is it uh, uh, forever uh, uh, the, uh, really expanding? What would be the, uh, our uh, really long, long time later future? And the thing is that the observation is that we are expanding, but with acceleration, more and more. So that is based on the, uh, so this, this, uh, this observation was made around the year 2000, uh, 1998, 1999, so year 2000. So the, based on the uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, the supernova, so the, as a result, what we do know at this moment is that this one. Our universe, so uh, right hand side of our Einstein equation, uh, there is some metal that we don't know, atoms, uh, but there are much more things that we do not know, but it's a metal. So we call it a dark metal because we do not know. That's a one fourth, let's say. And uh, much more things, more than uh, 70, about 70% are not metal, but some form of energy, we call dark energy. That's the, based on the uh, observation of the accelerating universe and the, also Kobe data, etc. So uh, our present picture is that uh, our universe is filled with the dark matter and the dark energy, and the uh, metal, uh, including uh, the atoms that forms my body, and the sun, and the other stars, all the things are less than 5%. That's what we do observe. Why? And, uh, we do not know. So this is, uh, this is called as a standard model of the cosmology. That's the present, uh, uh, present uh, the stage. So we say there's a standard model for the, uh, the cosmology we, 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 uh, was established, so-called uh, the jargon is a lambda uh, cold dark matter picture. But I don't want to go to the detail. Now, uh, with this, uh, we showed you the, the, uh, the smallest possible theory and the uh, largest, largest scale structures and they are related. Now, but we do not know yet real beginning of the Big Bang. Standard model cannot go up to that point. So do we have any some theory that may even handle that real Big Bang? And the thing is, uh, the, we have as a fundamental in the, uh, in the four earliest uh, picture, we showed you there is a concept of string theory. And the question is whether string theory can give a clue 
to the fundamental matter as well as the fundamental beginning of the universe. So uh, there is uh, uh, many things, but I guess my time is uh, so five minutes. So uh, not including questions. Uh, okay, good, good, good. Okay. So that let me be very brief. The idea of the string theory uh, is uh, this. Space-time is based on the Einstein equation that the space-time structures are determined by matter. And also another thing is a quantum. Quantum is that the smaller scale needs higher energy. That's the uncertainty principle. And uh, these two theories are never combined before. In your uh, physics education, either you learn quantum mechanics and then application to the condensed matter or uh, so whatever. And uh, or you may learn space time, but the classical theory, not quantum. So either you learn classical space time or quantum matter theory. That's the way we are taught, but never combined together. Can it be combined? Uh, the only possibility is the string theory. String theory is the only possible theory that combines these two uh, principles, uh, relativity principle and the quantum principle. That's the, uh, the it's, uh, essence of the uh, string theory. And uh, as we mentioned here, the string theory. So the, uh, as you said, uh, based on the, some string vibrational modes, uh, each vibrational mode may uh, hopefully explain all the fundamental things and the many other methods that, that have been uh, proposed by so-called particle physicists. Okay, uh, there is some uh, history, but the, uh, I guess uh, better to uh, uh, stop by. Let me just mention that whenever we have new challenge, we do need some guide, guide right? So we do need some guideline, some guide. Uh, so for the when uh, in the quantum mechanics, in the uh, early beginning of the early 20th century. When quantum mechanics, uh, in the uh, uh, all uh, the birth stage of the quantum mechanics, we have a uh, lots of uh, spectroscopy data. The most important thing is the simplest ever uh, spectroscopy data, the, uh, from the simplest atom, which was what is the simplest atom? Hydrogen, right? Only one single electron. What can be simpler than one? Zero is nothing, right? So, 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 uh, so single electron. So, uh, hydrogen atom played very, very important, uh, important thing. Just from the spectro spectro spectroscopy data, you can build up quantum mechanics. So, what would be the simplest object that may be related to general relativity, and also that may be related to some quantum concept? That is black hole. So if we can have success in the unifying the theory of the space-time and the matter not anymore independent, then it should be through black hole. So black hole is the real thing, it's not the mathematical thing. And also it's very important because it may lead us to the yet unknown region of the fundamental level of physics. Okay, so that's essentially all what I want to say here. Uh, the matter we describe standard model, universe also, Big Bang cosmology, we introduce standard model. And the, I briefly mentioned this, uh, uh, still uh, unknown, uh, many things are unknown, uh, new idea, uh, uh, as uh, some unifying principles. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and tell your name. Raise your hand, please. Ah, okay, one. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Zainal Abidin from 
chemistry 19. Ah, okay. I have any question for professor. Mm -hmm. Do you do you think that the opinion about Adli matter is real? If it's real, can mm -hmm. you give an prof an example for me? Antimatter. Antimatter is it's real. Real. Okay. Sorry Thank that you. I did not uh, uh, explain much about that. Of course, antimatter is there. So we have an uh, electron, then we have an uh, antimatter of the electron, which is called positron. And the positron is used in medical science to treat uh, for the, um, the examination, etc. So the antimatters are the real thing. And uh, it even has some application already. Does it answer your question? Some therapy or uh, the machines or uh, you know so uh, are really uh, based on the some antimatter. And also, just like I mean the historically we called uh, electron as the minus charge and the proton plus charge, there is no absolute meaning of minus or plus. We may have called electron as a plus charge. Some other uh, life in other uh, somewhere in the uh, cosmos may call uh, may choose the convention that electron has plus charge. It may simpli simplify many things, right? With us. But anyway, just like uh, elect is electron matter and the positron antimatter, that's our convention. But we may have called it the other way. Then we are consisting of antimatter, right? But that's a little bit funny. That's why we choose, you know, so this as a uh, matter. Then the natural question is, why do we not see met, uh, uh, antimatter that much? Only the matter. Uh, we are some remnant. In the early universe, matter and the antimatter, that symmetry is called uh, so-called uh, charge parity. So there is uh, some symmetry. Uh, it's a very uh, good symmetry, but slightly, slightly broken. So let's say we have uh, in the early uh, universe we had thousand matter, nine hundred ninety nine antimatter. They annihilated only one matter left. That kind of analogy is what it is at this moment. We are kind after all cancellation of the matter and the antimatter, there was a little bit tiny ex, uh, I mean the excess of the things. That's what made us. That's the picture. So the antimatter is real. Next question, please. Yes. <clears throat> uh, thanks you. Thanks for the time. My name is Muhammad Andi Johari from ISO Technology School November. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I have two questions. Okay. The first one about the standard model. You said that uh, there was about three generations of quartz and leptons. But does the standard model can predict that there are three generations of them? And the second one, about uh, the quantum gravity part, uh, you mainly talk about string theory. What makes you favor the idea of string theory than other kind of quantum gravity, just like loop quantum gravity or something else? Thank you. Okay. Okay, very good questions. And, uh, mm -hmm. As for the first question, uh, string generation is the, uh, so, uh, let's say, if some particle decays chan uh, through channel A, but then the, it takes, let's say, uh, uh, let's say, uh, six years, let's say, then another channel B, then it takes again uh, another uh, lifetime. So then the, if you have more and so uh, twice a channel than single channel, lifetime becomes half. So it's uh, right. Uh, and if you have another channel, decay channel, then you have your uh, lifetime is uh, reduced by one third. So, so that's the analogy. So, so -called, there is a so-called Z boson, uh, so some particle. So we measure the lifetime and the widths. Then we can see how many decay channels or how many families are there. And the observation is 3.0 plus minus something. 
And then you may think some, there must be some assumptions, right? You may think, well, maybe in the, uh, there must be some fourth channel, but it's not the same as the previous three channels, very heavy or whatever, and so that effect is negligible here, but still we have, uh, have some uh, other generation. You may uh, say many other alternatives, but in the simplest case, the way that explain our experiment that has been done in 1980s is just three generation period. That's the uh, answer for the first question. And the second question is that I try to say that the uh, string theory is not the only theory. As you said, there is other alternative like a, a loop quantum gravity. Then the question is uh, why do I say uh, the strings and etc. It's like uh, somebody uh, measures uh, physics like us, we are interested in physics, but somebody may be, may more be interested in biology or chemistry. Which one is right, which one is not wrong? I mean, it's, it's very hard to tell. It's not the, that kind of thing, right? So at this moment, there is uh, no way which one is better. But still, I must say my prejudice that uh, string theory uh, seems to be uh, very okay, but there are many, many difficulties in loop quantum gravity. But if you hear uh, from loop quantum gravity uh, people, they may say different answer to me than, I, than me, right? Okay, thank you. The last questions. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Desi. I'm from the Department of Physics, University of Malang. So uh, there is uh, one of things I did curious about. Uh, you explained before that uh, uh, if the universe is infinite, uh, the stars is not. Uh, I mean, if the universe is infinite, uh, the star. It's not infinite, so I don't get the paradox explanation part, Professor. So, uh, could you uh, help me to uh, get okay. that part? Good, good, Thank good. you. Okay, okay. So, uh, so uh, I'm sorry that I did not explain detail, but uh, let's think. Uh, we have only some uh, stars. Of I'm here, sun. Yeah. Okay. Then there's some stars here two layers and not more, even though the space is infinitely large, then of course the closest one would be most important to me, right? So that's uh, the way we see uh, daytime is uh, bright and the night is uh, dark, because we have only the finite number of stars. But if we have more and more, keep infinitely many layers, each layer uh, is equivalent to single star close to me. First layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer. Because uh, as we go further away, uh, each light uh, strength is, uh, if I go to this uh, three times uh, more distance, uh, then uh, uh, brightness is only one ninth. But uh, three times further away, there are five or uh, nine times more stars. So they cancel each other. So the uh, further away, that seems uh, that's also the same as the close one. But if we have this kind of infinite thing, they add up each layer of brightness, whatever tiny brightness it is, a small number, infinitely many uh, adding, you end up to very big number which is very daytime brightness. That's what I try to say. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, the more, the farther, uh, so it cancel each other. Right, right, oh, right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, so something must be wrong, and what I'm saying is that the universe has uh, finite uh, uh, lifetimes, and et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please give you a round of applause to <laughs> Professor Lee. Thank you. So it's such a wonderful okay. talk. Uh, terima kasih. Sama sama. <laughs> so from the explanation ever by Professor Lee about the Big Bang, I can infer that actually every single atom of carbon inside your body was once 
inside the star. So be happy because you can be a star.